Hey there, and welcome back to uh, the show. What's it called again? <laughs> United We Stand, Divided We Podcast. That <laughs> was just, Lionel, and I'm Robert. <laughs> I was just testing to make welcome. sure you remember this time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, of course, me in Canada, Toronto, Canada, to be specific, and Robert's uh, over there in Tennessee, uh, enjoying some lovely weather. Uh, I'm being a little facetious. Hopefully nobody got hurt. Uh, there was just apparently some tornado weather down there. Definitely some torrential rains and a bit of flooding. So before we get started, I just yeah. want to make sure everything's okay. You guys are okay over there, right? Yeah, yeah. All's good. I did the assessment on the home um, last night and this morning. and Everything's good. A um, few trees around the neighborhood. A neighbor lost his tree across the street, but they cut that up already. Um, flooding's gone. It, it receded pretty quickly. Um but yeah, there was apparently a, a big like E3 that touched down in Spring Hill, which is a good distance from me. So it was not anywhere okay. near me, but apparently it did quite a bit of damage. But fortunately, thank God we were spared this time. So, no well, worries. yeah, it's good, good to know. I mean, E3 is still nothing to sneeze at, but at least, you know, you're not in that F4. Oh, my God, I'm about to die um, territory. And yeah. hopefully nobody got hurt out that way. Um but that'll be something we can actually maybe discuss on a future program is what's it like here when it comes to things like tornadoes or any other bad weather versus a lot of places in the U.S. There are some striking similarities and a lot of differences, but I guess uh, for those who might be watching or listening, uh, we have been talking about hockey for the last couple of few weeks, and we're going to start out with that because <laughs> obviously there's been a few changes. We already know about some of them from last week. And I was surprised uh, by another one. Uh, I thought a particular team was going to win and didn't. Uh, anyways, Robert, you have a little bit more information on that because I'm kind of admittedly not following it as much. I'm not exactly depressed that my team's out, the Winnipeg Jets, but at the same time, I'm not as interested in following all the other teams, um, probably until the Stanley Cup itself. Anyways, you, you take this for now. Honestly, uh, I think... It turned out pretty close to the way I expected it to turn out, other than I thought that the Jets would go further than they did. Um, I thought they would definitely go through the first round. I was pretty confident that Preds weren't going to make it, but we actually went one game longer than I expected. So the Preds are out, the Jets are out, yeah, on the next year. Um, Washington was eliminated. They were swept. Figured that was going to happen. The Islanders, gone. They won one game. They're gone. Maple Leafs, unfortunately, they're gone. I actually kind of wanted them to go a little further because Matthews is, I mean, a 70-goal, 69-goal score. I mean, that's nothing to sneeze at. And, unfortunately, he was out like the last uh, two games or two and a half games. So, they didn't even have him on the ice that might due to illness. Problem. So, Yeah. But, uh, you know, if, if I might interject for a second there, I actually not interject really, I mean, sort of, uh, in regards to that, with the Jets being out, I, I, honestly, I'd probably be rooting for Edmonton, maybe Vancouver. Uh, I'd like to see a Canadian team do something. But on the other hand, regardless of who in the West goes, I, I kind of think it would have been kind of nice to see McKinnon versus Matthews in a who's going to be the yeah but they, you know what that's also the same kind of thing i wouldn't mind seeing in the west with um connor mcdavid <laughs> people like that too that short i put up they, yeah i know <laughs> connor mcdavid uh versus uh nathan mckinnon would would also be something really nice but anyways uh, continue on with yeah. your uh, no i, I there's not much else i mean it's um Oh man, sorry. That's bad. <laughs> I was glad to see Dallas beat <laughs> Vegas. I did not want Vegas to move on. And now that Dallas is in the second round, I'm really hoping um, that they can be eliminated in the second round because then those two teams will be out, which I don't want either one of them to succeed. <laughs> but uh, we'll see. Uh, it's it'll be it'll be this will be a tough fight. Um, the Panthers beat the shit out of the Bruins Ooh. six to one. Wait, so, wait. 
Yeah, I told you I wasn't following. I, I mean, I, I had a busy yeah. day yesterday. Um, I was a little tired, and you know, I hadn't been you know well for a while, and I hadn't worked for a while, and I went back to work first day yesterday, and it was so sore. Uh, but it wasn't that. I thought I had slept enough in the previous several days. I was finally catching up on sleep. I slept like a baby. 10 minutes after I got home for about two hours. So uh, I wasn't really paying attention to anything in the last couple of days. Um, so they, they really destroyed them. Like, uh, yeah. What'd you say? Six to one. It was six to one. Yeah. And, and um, as I was talking about uh, Kachuk and um, Pasternak got into a fight and it, it really wasn't a fight. Kachuk beat the shit out of him. <laughs> so it's kind of like they, they did to the whole team. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that series okay. will be an interesting one because, you know, that's going to build some animosity for sure. That That's, uh, you know, um, every time somebody mentions any of the Kachuks, I, I honestly think, okay, well, both, both of them, I'm not big fans of them, but honestly, I was a huge, and I mean, I was a huge, huge fan of their father Keith when he played for the Jets in fact before he played for the Jets I he was the Toronto Maple Leafs if I'm not mistaken um and and I, I was a fantastic player when the Jets traded from us yes yes we got Keith Kachuk that's awesome uh, uh, but I don't know um but on the other hand considering who he beat up uh I'm not gonna say I'm not happy about that either. yeah yeah <laughs> Well, we'll so, see. It's, it'll be an interesting right. series for sure going forward because that's going to definitely build some animosity. Yeah, uh, Vancouver um, ended up beating um, the Oilers. Unfortunately, I kind of wanted um, them to lose. Obviously, a little <laughs> passive aggressive like- revenge, <laughs> but uh, it was five four. It was a high scoring game. Yeah, yeah. I I would have liked to have seen Edmonton win, but I mean, you know they. Are they playing tonight? Uh, I don't know who's playing tonight. You know, I'm not. I, I I get NHL alerts all the time on my phone. Is the only reason why I'm really staying up on it. I haven't watched a hockey game since you know I left, fuming mad from Bridgestone Arena. <laughs> so <laughs> I was mad. But yeah, um, you know, I I was disappointed when the Jets lost, but I can't even fathom what it's like to actually have to sit there. In 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 the uh, in the actual arena that it's happening, when your team should have been winning the game, yeah. and somehow managed not to. Uh, the Jets weren't even in it; they 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 had no business even being on the ice that day. So, well, it was zero zero right. until one minute thirty eight in the third period. Wow! And oh, that's right. That I point, remember. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. I turned it on for a while at, near the end, and I was like, "Should I text him or leave him alone?" Oh, he's got to drive home. I'm just going to let you remember that I didn't talk. I didn't talk to you yeah, for a while. Yeah. And I was thinking he's got to drive home and he's going to be just pissed off. Yeah. I, I'm going to leave him alone. And I think I texted you the next day, like well into the afternoon. And I said, welcome to yeah. the club. <laughs> yeah. Well, you and I, I think uh, both are understanding uh, the same yeah. thing that, you know, when our teams are abysmal and something like that happens, we just have, to, I have to have time to decompress. I, I don't want to chat. Like, I don't want to yeah, talk. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I was, yeah pissed and i just like yeah i mean yeah well this is the, the, the biggest difference uh though is that i i almost automatically want to go and and play you know uh, uh ghost recon breakpoint or call of duty or <laughs> or or anything where you where you're shooting npcs i'm gonna i say npcs because that way i don't say something like people when i'm talking about video games kids right. um <laughs> <laughs> so yeah get get your aggressions out with a controller or a mouse and keyboard if that's your thing um well but i get, get pretty emotionally invested so i mean I, when i come home from games like that even if it's a winning game i'm i'm exhausted because i'm yeah have been so mentally and physically into the game uh but on those kinds of losses it's just like it's gut-wrenching because uh, i mean and I'll, I'll be honest with you the predators actually played a really good game up I, until I and i knew it was going to come down to one mistake one team was going to make one mistake 
and they were going to score the winning goal. It was going to end up being a one nothing game. I that's what when I got through the second or halfway through the second period, I'm like, this game's going to go to overtime. Nothing, nothing is what I thought because the teams right. were both playing defense like crazy. And I'll be honest with you, their third string goalie was you would not know he was a third string goalie that just started playing no, two he, games prior to that. He played yeah. stellar. He was making some amazing saves. So credit where credit's due, the Canucks played the defensive game that they're known for, and this backup yeah. backup <laughs> played stellar. Um, because we pelted him. We, we had the Wait, highest shot total at, at in least the playoffs. You didn't get beat by uh a, a an emergency goalie sitting in the in the last row <laughs> i'm not yeah. sure which team that happened to don't remember we'll just leave it at that <laughs> well yeah at any rate <laughs> so anyway, yeah um, it, it was it was a it was a bummer but uh but yeah yeah Barry Trotz um, is setting a new tone in Nashville for sure. He's already made statements like, look, if these two people don't improve, they're out. We're going to get younger. We're going to get faster. We're going to get better. Speaking of, yeah, yeah. speaking of out, let's actually do a brief little brief and move on. But uh, about some changes that are already obvious because they've already, they're already in the midst of happening. Uh, I believe uh, Toronto fired their coach, did they not? Yep. Yes, they did. They did. Uh, so I have no idea who's going to coach them, but Toronto is not in the habit of coaching no names. They're probably looking for whatever massive name coach they can possibly get their hands on. They didn't just retire. Yeah. <laughs> Segwaying to the Jets, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, he's retired. Uh, and, and of course, they, they're you know, it's all, all over Winnipeg news anyways. Uh, who's going to replace him? Who are they going to hire? So on and so on. I think they should hire Scott O'Neill as head coach. I think they should promote him. Um, not only do they do a phenomenal job for those several games that uh, that he was the interim head coach, um, but he's got years of coaching experience and a rich history <laughs> going through two generations of yeah. Jets teams as he played for the original Jets twice. So, yeah. Um, He's been with the team and much, much like, uh, oh, why am I doing this now? Is it Monday or something? I literally just forgot the now former coach's name. How did that happen? <laughs> you bail me out. What do you? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, thought, this is going to end up on the, this is going to end I, up on the shorts again. Oh no. <laughs> yes. Anything for those clicks. <laughs> Now you made me didn't think about it. Um, geez. Um I almost said Paul Maurice, but that's no, he's no, already been gone. The, that's the former one. Could they get him back? Oh no. gosh. No, they could no, they can't get him back. Uh, that's another great coach, though. Uh and, and who knows? Maybe they can entice him to break his contract and sign with the Leafs. But uh and he'd probably make them better. You know, if you hadn't asked me, I would have been able to say that. I Man, know. I'm I'm just gonna have to to, to look at it. Hold it's on a second. <laughs> <laughs> the name's literally just fallen right out of my brain. But you know what? At least I didn't call him Connor McGregor. No, so we'll that you didn't. That. That's embarrassing. Uh, while you're looking that up. Bonus. Uh, but, bonus. <laughs> That's bad. Man. Okay, so sorry about that, Mr. Bonus. Uh, I honestly will say that uh, <laughs> you have no idea how much, as a, as a huge avid Jet fan, uh, I have appreciated everything you've done for the team, uh, how much uh, you've put into the team um, for years and helped uh, bring along a lot of players who've, in many cases, ended up with the Jets or played against them and made them better because of it. So uh, he's retired. And honestly, I, 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 I'm i happy for him. Um, he's been doing it for so long, over 2,700 games, including assistant coach. Yeah. Man, uh, the most of anyone in NHL history. It's a, that's including assistant coach jobs. Uh, and uh, of course, you know, earlier in the season, he had to take the time off because his wife had, had been ill. Uh, mm -hmm. Not, and we don't know anything about what that illness was, and it's none of our business, so we're not going to go there. But uh, I, I imagine he probably just wants to spend the rest of rest of his time with his with his loving wife now and, and his family and and enjoy life. You know, he's been doing this for decades now. 
right? So yeah, hockey's got to be one of the most yeah. Yeah. grueling and demanding sports that there is for players and coaches alike, just because of the sheer schedule. I mean, there's like nonstop travel. There's I I yeah, I insane. I would I would honestly have to say one of the yes, um, baseball uh, supersedes that in many ways, uh, especially considering when you are away. Uh, you could be away for three weeks at a stretch just to play two different teams. Mm. Yeah, see, I don't follow baseball. So like don't know. you know, uh, you're you're playing a, a three game series uh, in 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 uh, Philadelphia, and then a three game series in Pittsburgh. They're two different yeah. leagues, so it's not likely. But are they two different leagues? Wait a minute, are they two different leagues? They're two different uh, leagues. Yes. You're asking the wrong guy about baseball. I have. Oh, no you're not idea. a baseball fan at all. I. I <laughs> I'm not a massive baseball fan, but you know what? Uh, maybe we should talk about that one day in the future too, because you know, Canada has. No, a, I mean, I just couldn't get into history than most people think, so that could be something we could talk about later. But anyways, in a future episode. Anyways, yeah. having yeah. said that, I do think Scott on Scott O'Neill is is probably the perfect person for the job, but I'm not the guy picking, and I don't know what their <laughs> criteria are. Yeah. For how they're going to pick somebody, so hopefully Kevin Day off, whose name I actually managed to remember. Not something like Rick Bonus. Uh, <laughs> uh, whatever his ideas are, they've been very good. Uh, he's yeah. built an amazing team, so uh, I'm pretty sure. And he's picked good coaches for the most part, most of the time. So, I Well, it makes sense uh, to have a you know a, an assistant coach move up that's underneath the teachings of a head coach that was successful because he can just keep on going. Sometimes, know, so. yes. Sometimes, yes. Yeah, but well, keep in mind, yeah. he wasn't the only one that was busy teaching him, and he does have other experience True. coaching. Uh, True. And his ideas are probably very similar, but yet vastly different in many ways. I would love to see what difference he would do, because when he did take his place, he knew what to do when he needed to do it, and any small changes he needed to make. But for the most part, he played by Rick Bonus's style of play that he wanted. He didn't deviate right. it. Sometimes assistant coaches, if they have more than two or three games to work with, will start to make too many changes, and they'll probably some of will make the team better. And sometimes it yeah. won't. Yeah. But moving from all of that, well, one quick thing is, um, yeah. Brunette is in the mix for coach of the year, which is cool because I think he did a yeah. fantastic job pulling these guys um, out of the uh, pit they were in, yeah, midway, absolutely. and 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 brought it back. And Roman Yossi is once again in the Norris Trophy uh, finalist. So um, well, I'm curious I'm to see sorry, where was those that two. supposed to be a surprise? <laughs> he missed that's it like last saying, year. They, they like snubbed saying, him last year. but That's like saying Connor Hellebuck, you're surprised Connor Hellebuck is being talked about at all at any point in the season for a Bezina. You know, yeah. uh, well, whether you know, they he snubbed, wins or they not is relevant. He's going to be too, sorry. Well, sorry. They snubbed UC. He's not even in the. I, I don't think that I don't think they actually snubbed him, and it's not his fault. It has nothing to do with his play. No. To be honest with you, I just believe that it didn't look good enough to warrant it, considering there is at least five other goalies who technically had better stats. But again, they also were in front of defenses that were vastly superior than what, at least in the first half, the Preds were offering. Um, right. The Preds were actually a very good defensive team in the last 30 games of the season. They were. They, oh, were, yeah. one of the yeah, they were one of the best. As a matter of fact, like, Canucks first, and the, the Preds were half, neck and neck. Yeah, in the first half, they were mid-range at best. Yes. Defensively. And offensively, they were not even. Not mid-range. mid-range. <laughs> but again, no in, the range. Second half, in the second half, their offense actually was a bit better than the Jets by a, a long shot. And I'm not kidding. The Jets finished yeah. like I don't know 17th or something like that in offense. <laughs> like as as the number one defensive team, that's not really unusual, because sometimes the most defensive team doesn't score a lot of goals. But unfortunately for the Jets, they needed to score more than they did. Anyways, I'm not talking about them anymore. Let's <laughs> go on with some other some other things. We've been talking about hockey for three weeks, so let's let's just you know be a little more jovial about it. Talk about something lighter. <laughs> And, 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 well, yeah, I mean, I'm done with all the things I wanted to mention, you know, yeah. um, the, 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 uh, the only other thing is on the little funnier side is, um, you know, we have those, I, I got a list of names from Utah of what they want oh, to name their to team that before we move on. That's a good, yeah. That's so, good right. Let's, let's show so, let's here. Go. Let me, yeah, let me, let me put that up on the screen here so we can see, uh, exactly. Oh, what you're it supposed, is. you're so, supposed to lie and act like, like we have an editor off screen doing it. <laughs> 
Oh yeah. I'm kidding him. Hey, hey, Stan. We <laughs> Stan. That's right, Stan. <laughs> Stan. Stan's so, you, not me. I, I got my own. I look. George. I look through this, George. and I'm going to tell you some of these names are completely stupid, right? So. Oh um, yeah. I mean, Utah like Swarm. Oh, what? no. The swarm is not the worst thing I've seen. That's not the worst. Okay. I get Utah Frost. It's cold. I get that. No, I don't like that. That's horrible. I don't like it, but I get it. Um, Utah Caribou. Yeah, no, <laughs> what? Just, let me ask you this. Does a Utah Caribou instill fear in your very heart? No. Of course not. No. Yeah. I, I don't know. Utah Blast. No. No, here, let me, um, let me say something about the blast, because I, honestly, I don't mind mentioning something about almost every one of these and the reason why they're terrible. Utah Blast sounds like um, uh, a team of 12-year-olds, and that is not ragging down on 12 years. I'm not saying that it's bad to be a 12-year-old on a hockey team. Yeah. Right. Right? If, if you're a 12-year-old hockey team, that's great, because, I mean, there's only so many names. Not everyone's going to be able to be the Jets and, and the Oilers. And and the Avalanche, right? Because there are small teams, you know, kids teams didn't pick those. But that honestly sounds like a team of children. Uh, anyways, moving on. <laughs> well, when I when I look at a name, I don't just look at the name and how it sounds. I look at like, what's the logo going to be like? Like, what kind of image can you portray that is ominous an explosion? or you know? If it was blast, would it be an explosion or would it look like an avalanche? Can't look like an avalanche because then we'd sued. Yeah, so it has so, to look like an explosion, and that would be, uh, they would be canceled. Yeah. In, in, in culture, they would be canceled. They'd have to change it. Yeah. And so, like, uh, Utah F Fury, um, I, that's okay. I don't mind soccer. that one. Soccer. That's a soccer team name. F from Moving who? On. Winnipeg Fury. They, they had a soccer team for years. Oh, they're, okay. And they're uh, not the only one. There's, there were lots. Go on. Uh, so, Utah Outlaws. Again, I don't know. <laughs> you know, if Montana ever gets a team. <laughs> <laughs> right. Maybe. <laughs> wild Wild West. You can have um what was that cartoon North, character North that used Dakota to hunt? Outlaws. The South Dakota Outlaws, right? <laughs> yeah. Um now this one, I actually like this one. Utah Yeti. Because <laughs> you can make a Yeti look pretty ominous. Yeah, right? but then you might as well call them the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim again. I mean, come no, on. Man. No, no. That's not even nothing like a even, duck. The only reason why the ducks even works at all is because it's been around so long people forgot to laugh. Uh, or got tired of laughing, rather. Sorry. Yeah, that, that's, that's, out of this first list, that's probably my favorite. No. Because uh, Utah Glaciers and Utah no, Glacier. Freeze. I mean, come on. No, no you could skip past both of those because they speak for themselves. Moving on. Yeah. yeah. So and we're going to get up to the good ones now. Uh, uh, yeah. No, not okay. the ice. The ice is too simple. <laughs> that's another that, dumb one that, to me. That that sounds that sounds like a, a beer league team. Yeah, man, we're yeah. gonna we're, we're gonna go play for the neighborhood ice. Yeah. That's for yeah. Mentor, Don't forget to bring a twofer. Yeah. Now Utah right, Mountaineers. Twofer, but... That one's not too bad. I kind of like Utah Mountaineers. That's not too bad, but I don't like about it, though, is that the word is so long. People are yeah. going to try to make nicknames, and there's going to be too many. But you can make a good logo and a good mascot with that. Right? Oh, you can make an excellent logo and mascot, absolutely. Yeah. But I just think the name is too long. But so is and the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. So what are you going to, you know, but it's easy to shorten that to ducks. What are you going to call them, the mountains? No. You, you can call them the nears. Anyways. Next, yeah, uh, Utah Venom again. I the, the, I see that, and I think of the movie Venom is the first thing that comes Probably. to mind. I'm like, well, no, I I agree. Some people will. I don't mind it, but for the reasons you just mentioned are why I wouldn't. But uh, yeah, at the same time, even though it seems weird, Utah is got a lot of nothing to mountainous, and they got desert and this and that and everything, right? So rattlers happen there too. So having, okay, so uh, why not Utah rattlers with Venom? Coming a draw, a single drop of venom coming out of just one of its fangs would well. Actually, oh. that, that would have been better. <laughs> I it almost went over my head when you said it, but that would have been better. The rattlers would have been fantastic. I would have loved yeah. it. But, yeah, it'd be great. Yeah, it could have had a great logo. Not a mascot would have been a little weird, but you know. Yeah, the next yeah. one you're getting to is the one that I would pick if I if I had only to pick these and no other choice. Utah squall. Oh, sorry. No, I. I no, sorry. I I was looking from oh. further back. 
please go on. <laughs> oh yeah, because I'm like squall. You would like what are you gonna? What are you gonna? Their mascot gonna be a big puff of wind? <laughs> what? Oh, it's got to be a blizzard and a whiteout. <laughs> squall. What are you talking about? Uh, you know what I'm saying. Or out I'm in the scared. ocean, it could be a squall. But uh, yeah, I guess. What is, what is that next one? You thought HCC? <laughs> HC? I have no idea what that is. What the hell is that? Okay, let's move on then. Yeah, Utah oh, hive. hive. The hive is not that bad. That 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 indicates a swarm, right? Um, it's basically our team is going to swarm you, you know, after a hive or a swarm. Would either one of those would be good? How anyway. is that relative to Utah? It's not. Like I'm Utah powder, saying, I get that one. Yeah, I do too. But at the same time, it's terrible. It is. Now, uh, Blizzard, I like Blizzard because, I mean, that's, you know, that could be all I, right. I, now, you see, again, that one sounds uh, this time. That like sounds a like a basketball team. No, Well, that or, or lacrosse. The Utah mm -hmm. Blizzard are taking on the Toronto Raptors tonight in <laughs> basketball. <laughs> Even though Utah already has a team. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and then there's Utah Canyons. Not, yeah, no, uh, no. Yeah. Like now, the next one is probably another favorite. And this goes along with the other one. We we're talking about Venom and the Black Diamonds. And that kind of reminds me of Diamondback, you know, like. Wait, wait. You know what? You kind of. There's no Diamondbacks in Utah, unfortunately. Otherwise. No, I but it kind of it sounds a little like. Ominous to me. Vegas though. should have been the Diamondbacks. Now that I think about it, yeah. <laughs> but um, I like Black Diamonds. I mean that that's kind of a cool but name. But I, again, I have no idea if you have Black Giant Diamond Cheese in the in the U.S., but we do here. So for for me, it makes it seem like a brick of cheese. Oh no, I don't have. Well, maybe we do, but no, I've not seen it. I don't. Well, if you haven't seen it, it's probably not. It's probably a Canadian thing. I'm. I, yeah. I have no idea. Um, what's that last one? Utah Mammoth. And so, oh, God, no. But it, again, it makes more sense than some of those others. How? Because Mammoth, you know, Mountain, there's, you know, uh, Sasquatch, you know, is kind of what comes to mind, you know, like, well, I don't no, know. a Mammoth, a Mammoth is a big, huge, woolly He's, elephant. Right. I know. Pretty I know. Sure. But that's what I'm saying that, you know, it, you can <laughs> make something of it, you know, I mean, it makes yeah. more sense than. Uh, okay, fine. You know what? I'll tell you what. Uh, if it was, if the logo was a mammoth head and both the tusks were actually hockey sticks. Look at that. See, that'd be cool. That would be really cool. It would also yeah. be really stupid. It would be cool, but stupid. I, I wouldn't like well, it personally. Um, have honestly, you seen the Coyotes logo? <laughs> that they're I, coming from? <laughs> there is nothing about the Coyotes uh, logo or name that I've ever liked. I mean, I understand why they're the Coyotes and it kind of makes sense. They're not fierce. They're more like a, a screaming, they'll run away sort of animal. But, but I, look, I get why they're the coyotes. Right? I, I get why. But the last logo they had, the real colorful one, um, I looked at it one day. I'm like, wait a minute. That looks like a really fancy poop emoji. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned stu that to me. It looks stupid. Anyways, yeah, you, men you mentioned that to me. And do we need this on here? You don't need this on here anymore, do we? No. So oh, I'm curious, which one is, if you were to choose two, which ones would you choose? All right. I've already uh, told you my favorites. I would I would choose uh, Blizzard. Uh, Blizzard, sorry. <laughs> Hive uh, or Venom. That would be it. I mean, I see Wait, Venom was, more than Hive. Was, was there not a swarm option? I would have sworn when I looked at it, there was a swarm option. No. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, the first one, okay, Utah so it, swarm. it would either be Swarm or, 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 or uh, I forgot the other ones. There's Swarm, Hive, and... Um, oh. Oh, well, that's my uh, that's my setup. That's my that's my office right there, guys. We're getting, we're getting a look at your studio, at least the back end of your studio from behind you. Uh, yeah, so um, up your right, rather. Um, yeah, I, I the, the, to me, I like Yeti. I think it's cool, and I would do Yeti and. Um, Black Diamonds, I kind of like that one. Or Mammoth, so those are mine. But anyways, all right, moving on. Wow, 
Okay, so we, if we were if we had anything with, with, with management there, we would be in a complete disagreement, and it would never get done. And it ended up being called the Utah Elrons, and that would be the end. Of it. <laughs> yeah, they meant, that one didn't make the cut, <laughs> even though it. You know, I submitted yeah, it. Hey, it didn't make out the of cut. It. Yeah, this is just fan voting. That doesn't mean that that, 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 that no, no other choices. Do you know that the Winnipeg Jets were not part of any fan voting or suggestions or anything they had on the table? But everybody kept saying, no, they got to be the Jets. They got to be the Jets. They got to be the Jets. So they made the announcement, and the announcement came during the draft when they drafted Mark Shifley. They brought well, the according Jets to Smith, the, who was talking in this article that I pulled this from, he's letting them choose. And so here's yeah. what's going to be. He says, he goes, it could take 24 months. It's totally fine. He's like, until they choose a name, that it's just going to say Utah. Yeah, I know. That sucks. I mean, I honestly, I hated it enough when the Jets actually went to the draft with NHL jerseys. Yeah. Um, but at least they had Winnipeg Jet jerseys that they actually put together in two months flat. When they yeah. debuted, they had their stuff. I don't understand why when they have uh, five months, four months, well, until the actual beginning of the season, it's uh, uh, yeah. But they they can even bring them out mid season. They don't have to five wait months. from season to season. They can do a mid season. You know, well, they could, but but my point is, they got launch. five months. So even if they took them two months to figure out the name, why would they have to? Like, I know you want to do a lot of market research, but you can't go only with what the fans want because what your fans want that pick it right now aren't going to be the same thing the fans that actually pay for the tickets three years from now are going to give a shit about. That's why Winnipeg Jets management listened to the fans and said, no matter what other choices they have suggested and we have thought of, we're going to go with what the majority are begging for, and that's to be called Winnipeg Jets because the league already told them they could have the name back. Did you know that, by the way? When the Jets were sold, the name of the Jets, the organization was sold, which unfortunately includes the history, blah, 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 but not the name. The name usually travels, and then it's either kept partially and changed a little bit or, or, or is completely wiped out altogether, but the rights are kept for a certain amount of time, right? They waive the rights because Winnipeg Jets, they said the one thing I don't want is, to, is, is for them to have that name. They're moving, and it's going to hurt everyone, and, and the sale is not going to include the name. The NHL agreed to take ownership of it and put it aside. Not hmm, necessarily not know knowing. What's that? I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. So they did. So when it came time to get them, they they basically just asked the NHL. They said, can we can we uh, put that on the table if we want? And they said, of course. Uh, it is. No, nice. There's no charge for it. You just have it back. It's yours if you, if, you, if, you, if you want it. Bettman was not only on board, but he was actually instrumental in actually making sure that the league took the name and held on to the title and the rights, so they yeah. were able to do it. And this if last sweater happened. they made, this last people, sweater they made with the logo right, on, it was really one nice. Hang on a second, but Bettman, everyone in Winnipeg was like, Bettman, it's his fault, and he's one of the reasons why they moved him. Blah blah. blah. Bettman never wanted him to leave. That was completely false. And 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 he also, again, he was instrumental in doing that because while then nobody knew that it was actually going to happen, he thought if there's ever a chance. They'll probably want to have that name in Winnipeg. It's a small market. They're not going to settle for changing the name. Um, so they'll have the option and they can keep it. And also, if they sell merchandise, the league can make money off that merchandise in the interim. And it made sense. And he did it exactly that way. Now, the league could have charged them. They could have charged two North money to buy that back. They didn't. They just gave it back to them. Mm, that's nice. That's cool. I, yeah, I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah. So, well, <laughs> you know, it's we'll, we'll we'll see. I you know, it's I the when he said, "Oh, we're just going to be called Utah." You know that came to mind is Washington football team. <laughs> the most ridiculous name. <laughs> I mean, come on. Really? You can't come up with a name. It's like 2 years you're going to be Washington football team. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Well, you know, there's there has to be that happened, but Anyways, so under the more jovial stuff, <laughs> not necessarily jovial, but it's less serious. We're gonna have to talk about all the teams that uh, are losing that we want to win and all that stuff anymore. So yeah, I, yeah, I, I think I we'll, we'll cover the Stanley Cup when it comes around, probably because that's gonna be a big game. You know, a lot of people watch that, but uh, up until yeah. then, yeah, it's at our league. You know, I'm kind of done but, with hockey. 
<laughs> yeah. So, hey, that's a good segue, which is not a good segue. It's just a quick cut into, let's talk about something stupid, just for shits and giggles. Uh, uh, basically, fast food restaurants and coffee chains, U.S. versus Canada, because some of them are the same, but some of them are different. Some of them we don't have, some of them you don't have, but for the ones that are, we both have, sometimes there's menu items that are different. Uh, although that might be true in different regions, even in the U.S. Um, in some cases. Um, yeah, it is sometimes. But it, it would be interesting to see if my mouse worked, first of all. Um, sorry, I had nothing to do with that. But um, what I was thinking was uh, things like McDonald's are obvious. By the time the U.S. had like 50 McDonald's, there was at least a couple in the, in, the, in Canada. Like it, it moves that fast, right? We yeah. have our wins in our McDonald's. But what I'm curious about are what are some of the places that I've probably heard of, but we either haven't had here or have had sparingly in only a few locations. Um, and I'll be honest with you. I had never in my life ever been to a Krispy Kreme until a couple of years ago because I thought we didn't have any. Apparently we did for a long time, but it was a long ways from here. We suddenly in the last five years have them popping up all over the place. But I never knew what the hell a Krispy Kreme even was until about five or six years ago. Although yeah. I've heard of it. So um, are those, is Krispy Kreme everywhere? Or is it like here where it's like your luxury donut place? Um, <laughs> they they overexpanded and ended up having to, like there used to be a couple stores that were really close to me and they've closed because they overexpanded. Okay. But they're they're pretty they're pretty popular and they're pretty plentiful they're also pretty um, good yeah they're really good yeah. and they're if you ever get a chance to get to new york it. there's a krispy kreme in times square that is amazing they have Better? their entire donut rack exposed so you can watch the donuts get made cooked iced and put in your box oh, wait a minute i thought that's how they did them on all of them because that's the only way i've ever seen it that's how they but, do it up the street we're not up the street it's in my neighborhood though yeah, but this here you can walk beside it and watch it go down. That that's the only one I've ever seen. You can well, okay. Do you that. in this one you can't necessarily walk beside it because the whole thing's behind the counter, yeah. but you can see the entire process. Yeah, 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 yeah. It. Right. They yeah. also have plenty of donuts and whatever the other things are called, you know, the crawlers or whatever they are, um, in a case right at the counter. Yeah. But when you say I, I'm looking at him and I'm looking, okay, I'd like. Uh, all right, I'd like you know what I'd like to get two dozen of 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 of, of a mix. So you know, four of this and four of this and four, you know, that kind of thing, right? You're right. And, and I walked up the counter and I did that. I expected her to reach in with some tongs and pull them out. She didn't. She went over to the to the conveyor belt and took them off the conveyor belt as they were coming <laughs> yeah. off. And then and then another rack that was beside where they were they were all still hot. All yeah. of them were still hot. So uh, I I will say this. Um, I'm a fan, and I'm jealous that you guys have had that since, you know, either since you were young or before you were born, depending on how old you are. I've had to wait until I was well into my 50s <laughs> before I discovered Krispy Kreme. Yeah, so. and you got to, if you see the hot donuts now sign lit, you better head in there because they're going to have some tasty hot donuts. <laughs> what about what about something like In-N-Out? I don't think we have that here. I gotta, I'm going to No, so I know for a fact you don't have In-N-Out. So okay. here's a story about In-N-Out. Right. And I love in and out and I'm super I, I, excited I to share like some it. news with in and out. Right. In and out has been a West coast company, California based. Right. Then they expanded. Oh, okay. Oregon, Washington. They, they expanded out a little bit. They've been really slow to move as far as moving out of the Western United States. They were in Texas for a long time, and then Texas was as far east as they got. But they've opened a corporate in Franklin, and we have a in and out burger coming about 20 minutes down the road from me. I wow. can't okay. be more excited. <laughs> so good. If you've not had an in and out burger, well, you're gonna, so ha you're gonna have to send me one. No, <laughs> <laughs> I wish that were possible, but no. Um, and they, yeah, they do you know how they make their like their their food's all fresh made, yeah. And, and like the potatoes, when you order French fries, they take a potato, they 
put it through the slicer and put it in the oil and yeah, give you the fries. Kind of like going to an old diner. Yes. In the 50s or 60s when they would take the burger meat and cook it on a grill right in front of you, make a yeah. milkshake in front of you, give you fresh cut fries that they cut in front of you, yeah. and then hand you this hot, fresh meal. Very much like I've, that. I've only had one place I've ever been to that was completely like that. Although I will say this, I actually did go sit down to have a burger in a place not that long ago where I watched the guy actually take the meat out of the fridge and put it on the grill and form it into a burger. I was like, whoa, kidding? I yeah, was so, nice. it was good. It was so good. Um, yeah. And I just can't remember where I was. Yeah. It wasn't a fast food place, though. It was like a, 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 a local uh, yeah but. yeah but yeah if you get a chance to have in and out it's it's amazing they have a special menu too that you can ask for that has like some crazy concoction you know chili cheese fries and triple decker burgers with crazy stuff on it but yeah i just go the old double double with a fry and a and a shake or a coke i'm good to go it's so good but i'm curious to know do you have hardy's or Carl's Jr. Uh, I'm sorry. What did you say? Hardee's or Carl's Jr.? Carl's uh, Jr. Uh, oh, oh, so, oh, you know what? I was going to bring that up. I only found that out today on a YouTube video I was watching. Dang, I'd love to cite that here, but I don't remember what it was. Um, but uh, the person was talking about, uh, oh, I do remember. I'm going to have to actually say the name of it. And don't be, uh, it's going to, it's embarrassing because it's actually a podcast. It, it, that doesn't come out right. I mean, it's, they're they're adults doing a podcast for people in their generation yeah they're teenagers right but they're funny as hell and they do these weird things so uh i was flipping through and i saw theirs and i saw and they were talking about this because they were doing like a game show or something and they mentioned um uh what did you just what was the restaurant you just said harvey's right well hardy's oh, sorry, not harvey's Hardee's. or carl's harvey's. jr harvey's, harvey's is a canadian one i'll bring that up in a minute but uh, he did say something about what is uh, what restaurant or fast food restaurant uh, is is the same but different on the West Coast and the East Coast. Now, I know that we have Hardee's all over Canada. Uh, and so I don't remember. So I want to guess that Hardee's is the West Coast and Carl's Jr. is the East Coast. It'd be the other way around. However, oh, okay. they used to be separate companies. Oh, did and they? Carl's okay. Jr. bought Hardee's because Hardee's was struggling. So here, there's been a lot of the menu items. Like all of a sudden, one day I noticed that the Hardee's sign had the Carl's Jr. star on it. I'm like, oh. And they started bringing in some of their burgers. I loved um, Carl's Jr. I I worked there. I used to eat there, ate there before and after I worked there. I worked there as a young kid. That was my first job in high school. Um, loved the food. Oh, sorry. No, I was going to say, and, and it's when when they took over Hardee's, they started bringing some of the similar menu items, which I was, you know, glad for. But it, it's still, it's not the same. It doesn't taste I, the same as the Carl's Jr., but I was kind of curious if they were up in Canada. I didn't know. I want to I want to share a Wikipedia page. I just want to make sure I'm not doing this incorrectly. <laughs> um, that actually has a list of, I, I, I believe it's a list of American chains, although that's not what I asked for. Uh, but it gave me that. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, I can just, uh, do it like, I hope I'm not doing this wrong. Um, oh no, I'm not doing it wrong. Perfect. All right. I'm going to bring this up and, uh, it's on screen or have I made a mistake? No, you have to show on screen. I, oh, it's right on screen. What the heck? And I'm sorry. Did you say it? It wasn't on screen. There you go. Oh, oh, it just took a minute now. Now I'm not even looking at it. So now you can see it as long as you can see it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, some of these things I will not have heard of. That's very obvious because I'm imagining some of these are not nation. Well, it's, yeah, it says right on the, on the left side. Some of them are not nationwide. Um, although I'm kind of surprised that something called Bon Chon Chicken, I've never heard of if it says it's nationwide. In the never US. heard of it. Yes, yeah, even you have it. So maybe it's nationwide. It's just not very many. Uh, I might skip some of these because these we have a Panda Express. I have one here in town. Oh, these are, well, these are yeah, these are Asian Pacific ones. I should have I should have read that right away. So some of them are going to be a little bit more obvious to some people than others. As for baked goods, that would be crumble cookies. We have a crumble cookies here. 
I, I, yeah, I don't believe we have that either. But however, uh, Cinnabon, uh, that's that everywhere. Yeah. That's everywhere. Uh, and when I say everywhere, I mean, there's not a mall you can go into in Canada. That's <laughs> Same here. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. And you can smell it in my, and you know what? I first went to it for the first time. What was it? Uh, six months ago, whatever. And I was like, all oh, right, I finally get a Cinnabon. So like, yeah. Took a bite and went, you know what? <laughs> yeah. Three times as much as the, as an entire pack of cinnamon buns and in, in the grocery store that's made in a bakery in bulk. And those buns are 10 times better than the cinnamon i'm sorry cinnamon is not worth it i said it out I loud i don't particularly care for it myself honestly but yeah <laughs> but it, three times more expensive you think they would make it not stale when it's still hot how the yeah. hell is it fresh and it's stale at the same time it, that's what it tastes like and it's it dry and yeah you know mealy it's mealy that's what i meant to say i've never had a mealy cinnamon bun before that's weird uh, yeah, so look at insomnia cookies there. I saw an article about those. It was a guy that was in college that was, he always stayed up late, you know, partying, studying, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. He's always got a sweet tooth, wanted some cookies. Nobody was open in his area that he could get cookies from at two in the morning. So That's he created cool. insomnia cookies. And let me guess. And they were bought by Krispy Kreme for like some billions of dollars. Yeah, and then of course Krispy Kreme, we already have that. Mrs. Yeah. Fields is obvious. Come on, you can go into a grocery store and buy a box of Mrs. Fields. Yeah. Uh, Shipley Donuts. I'm recognizing uh, that. I don't know that I, we have one around pretzels, here, but pretzels is obvious for for I mean yeah, everywhere. You I've heard pretzels. the name, but never been in one. It's 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 more recently. I think we see them here. I'm not sure if we do. It it might just be you know the Mandela effect, and I'm only seeing it on television or something. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'm, I'm not even joking. It could be. It's entirely yeah. possible. But That's it does. Funny. It's more than familiar to me. I know what Wetzel's Pretzels is. So, uh, never heard of Yum Yum Donuts. Uh, I, I don't know why. That's why from I'm, my time in California, obviously. But yeah, well, I've heard of Winchell's the, too. Yeah, let's skip the beef section because I mean, it just well, where's the beef? Yeah. <laughs> Well, that would have been bad, windy. Bad, bad, bad joke. <laughs> All right. Now, wait a minute. What was this one? Beverages. Okay. This is going to get interesting. Uh, I, I think I might want to mention a few things about, about Canada. Of course, everybody knows everywhere you go in the world, you're going to get Coke and Pepsi. And in a lot of places, you might only get Coke-based products or Pepsi-based products or whatever company owns the distributorship of each one of those. Like if you go to a Wendy's uh, here, everything is coke uh no word of a lie that's that's a contract there no it's made it's either it's made by a company that that produces anything in the coca-cola umbrella so sprite coca-cola uh some kind of root beer i don't remember which kind they make uh various other ones i can't even think of the names of right now the other one would be pepsi and whatever the distribute distribution company is called here it's actually pepsi uh, out in Western Canada, it's actually called Blackwoods Beverages, um, who has the the uh, distribution rights to all Pepsi products. Yeah, we actually uh, have a Pepsi distribution and a Coke distribution in Nashville. Oh, right, in Nashville, yeah. Yeah, Winnipeg actually has Pep- uh, Pepsi, but not Coke. Um, this is Toronto, so we have both, obviously. <laughs> but, um, so I've heard of Caribou Coffee, and that's probably from, they say, it says out Midwest, Probably from when I would, you know, head out to see my dad in Oregon when he was still alive. Um, which brings up um, Dutch Brothers. If you look down a little bit, Dutch Brothers Coffee. They just recently started expanding out here. Uh, they've been in the West Coast for a long time, apparently. Really good coffee. Dutch Brothers. Uh, if it's really that good, I wish we, we did have it here. Because... <laughs> Cause I love me some good coffee and it's getting harder and harder to find good coffee for some reason. Um, yeah. Jamba juice. Um, heard of Never it. Heard I of don't it. know if we have it. I don't know. If we have it. Is that a West? It says nationwide, but it might be again, sparingly in some parts of the nation and large in others. Yeah. Uh, they're from Atlanta, Georgia. So I would imagine they should be around here. To look, you know, pretty plentiful. You think if they're nationwide, but I don't, I don't recall seeing a Jamba Juice. This maybe I just oh, don't pay attention. Sorry, I was looking at one. I thought it maybe I'd been to when I was in Chicago, but this was actually this came up before I was ever there or after I was ever there. Um, 
Kung, Kung Fu Tea. Yeah, you saw it too. <laughs> Orange Julius everywhere. Oh, yeah. everywhere. Every mall and, you know, sometimes yeah. even sometimes even a pop-up van at the outdoor event. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Planet Smoothie I've heard of, but I don't know that they have that in, in Canada at all. I've uh, never heard of it. I've heard of Smoothie King there, but never signed a smoothie. But hey, hey, there we are. Oh, yeah. yeah. Jimmy's. Toronto, eh? For sure. Yeah, it's not, but it's not from Toronto. So. <laughs> well, it says the the company is Toronto. Well, the head office is, but it, it didn't. It wasn't formed there. I mean, come on. The name. Uh, well, where after, was it formed? It named after Tim Horton, who was a hockey player. Um, you don't know the you don't know the uh, origin story of Tim Horton. Not of the restaurant. Oh wow! Yeah, he was an NHL hockey player, man. <clears throat> he started he started a donut restaurant. That's why it's called Tim Hortons. <laughs> um, is it good? Well, honestly, um, I've actually heard some people say that they prefer it over Dunkin' Donuts. Americans, obviously. Um, on the other hand, I've also heard Ameri- some Americans say the exact opposite. So it, it's a crapshoot. It's like any other kind of donut shop. However, if you ask... That's all they do most- is donuts? No, no. Absolutely not. It, it started out as a donut shop. You remember how donut shops used to be? You had a wall of donuts. You picked what you wanted, and then you had a yeah, cup of coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's pretty much it. They always had juice. Uh, probably 30, 40 years ago, they started making sandwiches in most of these places, but it was basically donuts, coffee, maybe a sandwich, maybe soup. And and that all morphed. Now every one of these places is soup and sandwiches, and maybe, maybe I might get a donut on the side. <laughs> yeah, but is the food good is what I'm asking, like the regular food? Is donuts. The food is actually not bad. It's actually yeah. pretty good. Um, but uh, the thing is, 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 is if you go to some place like Starbucks versus Tim Hortons, uh, this is this is um, in my opinion way better. And of course, it costs a, you know it's a cup of coffee. It costs like a dollar fifty or something, right? You you go to you go to Star. What is what is a cup of Starbucks? A cup of it's Starbucks. five or six bucks. I, yeah, it's yeah. yeah I'm just talking dollars. about regular coffee, which nobody goes to Starbucks to get. Oh yeah, I have no idea. Starters. Uh, you, know, you gotta you figure out a Vinti versus a, a whatever they call it. Look how many locations they have. 15,000 locations for Starbucks. That's crazy. Yeah, okay, but see this? 637 of these in the United States. Almost all of that is in like New York and uh, probably Vermont and places like that, right? Border, border states. That's it. Um, but if you, good lord, 5,000 for orange, 700 for orange juice. That's just in the U.S., I think. I don't even think it's including Canada. You'd probably add another 800 to 1,500 for Canada, considering how much smaller Canada is in city-wise and population-wise, right? Uh, that's saying a lot. But the Tim Hortons in Canada, I, I'm not even sure how many there are, but since there's one every second, <laughs> what? There's two every square foot or something. Uh, <laughs> there's more Tim Hortons than there are McDonald's, let's put it that way, a lot more. And mm. the McDonald's wow. is as prevalent in Canada as it is in the United States. Um, wow, huge! So chicken. I want a Chick Fil A. I'm tired of hearing about Chick Fil A. And oh, wait, wait, so we, good. We Hang on a second. I think we do have one now. So good. I got one. We have one here in Gallatin. It's so good. I believe they stupidly put it in 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 uh, downtown. And who the hell? I mean, come on. I want to be able to drive. Interesting though. You you passed up Boston Market. Uh, we used to have a Boston Market in Nashville. There might still be one somewhere, but they had some really good food. I was actually really bummed when they closed. I'll go it back. Was actually, to really good. Back well, no, I I just happened to see that up there. That they didn't have that many, but it said nationwide. But it's Chick-fil-A in Toronto. Please, please. <laughs> It heard me say, please. Oh, God, there's two. There's three. You got to go try one. And there's one of them is in a shopping mall, so I can actually park. Oh, wait, it's in the sh- It's in the biggest shopping mall, which means there's no parking. Because you can't <laughs> get into the lot. Last time Daddy's I tried. Little, last time I tried, chicken minis. Hmm. Last time I tried, I spent 45 minutes on the outer ring trying to get into the actual lot just to look for a spot. I gave up. Wow, that's that's crazy. Uh, all right. Okay. So you said Boston Market. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, I know. I just it, it's we. If there's one in Nashville, I don't know where it's at. The one I know used to be there. They closed a long time ago, but it was really, it was actually really good. They did rotisserie style chicken, so it had this big rack that would have these chickens that would just constantly rotate. Well, it was it, really it, good. now this is what I this is what I like rotisserie chicken. Now there is a place that we have here. And I don't know if it's in America or not. Offhand, I can't remember the name for some stupid reason. And I actually always liked it, but it was always a little bland. Rotisserie chicken usually gives you the savory flavor right out of the gate. It's like a mm, fall off the bone, beautiful flavor, right? But for some reason, this stuff, I don't know. I guess they did this franchise are getting lazy. And and then one day, last time I had it, like literally four of us were eating and literally four of us got sick. I have not had it since. That was wow. several years ago. But this yeah. looks like it's either related because it has a very similar sign or, or it's... Uh, it's just a fluke, but probably better. Yeah. Uh, anyways, yeah, I would. I would. Do you I, have I'm a chicken scared. salad chick up there? Uh, sorry, did you say chicken salad? It says Southwest Midwest, so probably not. South? Chicken salad chick. There's one here in uh, Hendersonville, which is not far from me. Uh, it's just oh, chicken yeah. salad only. Only chicken salad. All kinds of different crazy yeah, concoctions of chicken salad. I, I'm going to tell you, it sounds really good, though. It is good. It's it very really delicious. Does. They have and a free brand. Yeah, super delicious. I waited years for my opportunity to have Church's Chicken. I was so excited when they finally opened up a Church's Chicken about, I don't know, 12, 15, whatever it was. Uh, or maybe it was already there and I only just found out. I can't remember. But it was new to me for sure. Mm. And uh, I didn't get a chance to go in it for almost two years because of the, lo the location I was living. And... Uh, and when I did get a chance, I was like, oh, this is going to be awesome. Again, I have the chicken. I'm like, it's not bad. And I think I got to the second piece and I went, this tastes exactly the same as every other chicken I ever had. <laughs> and I've been back like once since, and it was the same thing. Yeah. It's not bad chicken. It really isn't. But in Canada, they're just not putting the flavors they're supposed to put in it, I think. I think, I think they've dumbed it down to save money or something because that extra half a cent of spice per bucket of chicken isn't good enough. But, um, it was it again. It was another disappointment. Fried chicken to me is a sacred thing. If you can't make it, you know what I think. Honestly, I think all fried chicken has to be extremely juicy, have nice crispy skin, and let's just put it this way: it needs to be southern fried. <laughs> yeah, it, or, yeah, I don't. Or I don't at least disagree. very similar, or at least very similar. And and yeah. yes, it, people in Canada still love things that are southern fried. So, uh, give me my southern fried chicken. Uh oh! Oh my God! You have a Jollibee's too. That's a no Philippine. Idea. That's a Philippine chicken place, and everybody keeps going. Oh yeah, it's really good. Again, I'm scared of it. I'm scared the chicken's going to be bland, and I'm going to pay twice the amount I would pay somewhere else. Yeah, I have. I have not even. I had no idea. But honestly, people are raving about it. The lineups when they opened the first one here a couple of years ago, the lineups were so long you couldn't get into the parking lot with a car. Well, there's only 54 locations in Hawaii, West, and Mid Atlantic, which makes sense. I it mean, can't be more than ten in all of Canada, and five of them are in Toronto. And three <laughs> years ago, there was only one. Oh, so, wow. uh, that is in the Philippines. There's way more than than 50. This is only 54 in the U.S. So, right, uh, that's what I'm saying. That's why I just, there's nothing out here. It's all. Yeah, no, I've never heard of Coast. KFC. We don't have KFC here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I believe well, that one. Obviously, I'm lying. <laughs> obviously. The man lived in, in in Toronto, well, actually Mississauga, technically, uh, for the last part of his life. Before he, that. Yeah, he did. He, 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 he even got Canadian citizen. He was a dual citizen uh, before his death. Huh. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. And again, that's 3,953. Oh, gosh, it's, look at the time. It's, uh, oh, shoot. yeah. What? Oh God, are we already there? Yeah, we're here. So yeah, we're we oh, got. We oh to... man, okay. <laughs> yeah, I gotta get rid of this. Okay, uh, ending the yeah. screen share there. Uh, you yeah. know what? I can't believe it. We had. I swear, it looked a while ago, not that long ago, and it said we had like a half an hour. And yeah. I was like, okay, we can go over this. It's gonna be kind of cool. There's a lot of things I want to be able to talk about. I'd love to talk about uh, some of the places in Canada that you don't have, and, and tell you about what I think you would like about them if they did have them. And stuff like that. So we're gonna have to get into that later. Uh, but for now, walk us out because we got like two seconds. <laughs> Robert from the U.S. Lionel, 
Yeah, there you go. We'll catch you next episode. Bye-bye. <laughs>